share my screen. So yeah, for those of you who don't know me, I've uh, been around a little bit, but not too much. Um, Jace from Bloom, uh, work working with our SSI uh, technology there, and we created this uh, wallet and credentials interaction uh, interactions spec uh, called Wacky, uh, and it's really just about uh, getting initiating and, and doing these interactions between relying parties like issuers and verifiers and wallets it's so like how, how do we get the data transfer from back and forth like we have these great specs for uh presentation uh presentation exchange and soon credential manifest but but those specs don't really specify how to uh get those to a wallet and and like how to f actually do those interactions uh, so this this spec uh aims to do um, so it's initiated with either a QR scan or a button click. Uh, and the, this, this just kind of initiates that, that, uh, that this interaction. So the click would like be a deep link into your app. QR is just like a payload. Um, but there's some items that I'm thinking of, of changing with this and in, in the future um, to make it a little bit more streamlined. Um, but the, 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 the uh, overall flow is you get a challenge token from the issuer. Uh, well, actually, you get a challenge token URL from this, this initiator, this QR link. We'll have a challenge token URL, which is a Git endpoint uh, that returns a or that returns JSON like this. Uh, so this challenge token is just a signed JWT. Uh, and it's it would look something like this with a header and a payload. Um, it'll have a GTI. Uh, an audience is optional, and then there'll be a callback URL. Uh, this callback URL is the, the post endpoint uh, for to hand off the next uh, next part of the interaction. And that's uh, what, what gets sent to this callback URL is determined by the purpose field. Uh, the purpose field right now can either be, uh, this, this kind of specifies which interaction you're going for. So it can either be an offer or a request purpose. Uh, but then this challenge, this callback URL is where you post the next uh, the next step. Uh, so yeah, so you get this callback URL, um, uh, or rather, you have this challenge token here. Um, but now you, as a as a as like a wallet as a holder, uh, you need to prove ownership of your did, and uh, and uh, so by you do that by taking this challenge token that you get from the relying party and create a response token, uh, which you sign. And it's just a signed JWT that has a challenge field. Uh, actually, yeah, right here. So this response token is just a, it's just a JWT that you sign as a holder and the, the there's a challenge claim and then that's set to the challenge token. So it's kind of acting as like a, um, a replay attack protection. Um, and then you send this token uh, up to the callback URL. You post the, the 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 response token to the callback URL, and depending on the interaction, um, you'll get some some response. But you always get one of these responses. Yeah, uh, you'll either get just a success like 200 status uh, from the, from that post, or you can get a redirect URL, which is used mostly in the case of uh, if you're if you're uh, while it is a mobile app and you're also interacting with another mobile app or you're interacting with uh, a, a web app on your phone, on your mobile device, you'll want to be, you want to put that user from their wallet back into your app some way. Uh, so this, this is what this redirect URL is, some kind of identifier that puts them into like a logged in session or back into that, uh, that same place where they were before they started the interaction. Um, or you can uh, respond uh, with a challenge, with another challenge token, uh, the the relying party can respond to your response token with another challenge token, and then that just kicks off this flow again. Um, and then this whole flow here is actually uh, outlined in this swim lane diagram. Uh, so if you want to go into more detail, uh, here's this is kind of where that is at. Um, and then the only real difference between the interactions are there's a, an offer claim interaction. This is when uh, a, an issuer is is offering uh, VCs to to a holder. Um, that the, they'll be represented with this credential manifest, um, and then the 
the credential manifest uh, spec does most of the heavy lifting there, specifying like what's what's in the output descriptors, all that stuff. Um, so then, yeah, to your response is just like this. And uh, if if this uh, credential manifest contains a presentation definition, meaning that it's like gated by uh, some requirements, you also can, in your response, you send back a, uh, a presentation submission uh, to the issuer. Um, and then, then that'll still just handle it just like, uh, just like it did with normal credential manifest. Um, and then your response, in addition to this redirect URL or uh, challenge token, uh, you get the verifiable presentation back. And this, this contains, uh, this is a credential fulfillment from uh, credential manifest. And this is just all the credentials that you were offered um, in a VP format. Um, and then the other side is the request share side. So this is when uh, a verifier wants to is wanting to, you you as a holder to share credentials to them, uh, so they can like authenticate you or uh, whatever else they want to do with those VCs. Um, so their uh, their purpose is request. Their callback URL is the same, uh, but this always includes a presentation definition, which is from Presentation Exchange, and your response is just a presentation submission. Uh, so it's pretty similar to. Um, the offer claim flow, if there was a nested presentation uh, definition in there, uh, this is just, you, you still need to pr provide the presentation submission. This is just always required in the uh, request share flow. Um, and then, yeah, uh, the response is just the same basic response, either redirect, redirect URL or another challenge token. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. Then we have like a, a just like a, frozen working copy of credential manifest spec while the credential manifest spec is still uh, being worked on. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it um, for Wacky. Are there any questions for that? the many JWT experienced people on the call have questions. <laughs> I'm assuming that for the JWT stuff, standard libraries will do all of this. None of this is particularly opinionated or bespoke or limiting. Sure. Very true. Yeah. So there's, we have a, like a rough implementation using Jose, for example. Um, and everything kind of just works as is. It just kind of uh, adds, I think, a little bit of restriction. So like it must have an ISS, it must have a JTI, um, but there's nothing that like, it, nothing takes away from the JWT standard. Um, and maybe a naive question, but the ISS, um... Does it have to be a did or a certain kind of did or is, are there any sort of assumptions there? Uh, no, it just needs to be resolvable. Technically, I don't, I, I use all, like all the examples use dids, but technically just like VCs, you don't need to use dids. Um, yeah. They could just be URLs, um, but yeah. Okay, interesting. It tries to be as unopinionated as possible. Cool. Uh, I think Adrian's the only one in the queue. So yes, uh, I'm. I'm looking at the uh, swim lane 3.6, mm -hmm. and uh, the everything basically starts with the wallet. Yes. Uh, my question to you is. Uh, what defines a wallet in this interaction? So in other words, um, a wallet sort of presumes that it is something under control of the holder. But um, what if the holder wants to delegate access mm -hmm. um, to some, some other service? Right? Yeah. Uh, some other, it could be another wallet, it could be a server, of some sort, uh, it's wherever they want that uh, uh, VC or VP to end up. Uh, how yeah. would that work, or how would we layer that on to this? Um, 
I don't think Wacky would necessarily care. Um, because all uh, I guess wa wallet in this in this situation is really just uh anything that has keys or or like uh or has been given keys to s store a VC. So it's like store or or a sh uh, share out a VC. Uh, so it really doesn't uh care about whether it's it's like a actual like mobile wallet or browser based wallet or a server uh some like like a delegated wallet like someone else owns it owns the keys but you kind of interact with it uh yourself uh it's just something that that can understand these challenge token urls and can sign jwts and send them back and 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 can store vcs when it gets them back um or or uses a vault or uh, encrypted storage to uh take out vcs and send them to the to the uh, verifier so basically uh so the assumption here is that the uh, issuer has some uh, public key or some bid or something that uh is linked to the credential that it's about to use. So that can be used as part of the authentication process. Um, yeah, so... Um, so th there was something that happened before this can happen, in other words, right? Um, because when somebody, when this wallet, which like you say, could be anything mm -hmm. or anybody, when they come to the, what you're calling the relying party, the issuer, uh, they could be anyone. So you're presuming that they're bringing something to this interaction that was otherwise either registered or a token that they had gotten at some point before, or am I wrong? Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's a good point of, it, it depends on the use case of the issuer of either the user is logged into their service through some other means, maybe they, maybe just like an email, like username and password, they're logged into some issuer's site um, and then they get a credential back uh, or uh, or some other means of, of knowing who the, the wallet is. Um, there would be something that's uh, that you could do there, uh, but you also don't necessarily need that, but there is the need for like this payload or this interaction to, to have like a unique identifier of some sort, um, which is typically, I think the JTI, um, where you can use like the subject to identify this interaction. Go back to this. Uh, did that answer your question? I might've misunderstood. Right, so in other words, the uh... The subject, for example, might have registered a bid for themselves. Um, could be a bid key for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that could be used then to execute. Any, anybody who had the private key uh, corresponding to that bid key would then be able to get this presentation using this flow. Uh, correct, yeah, yes. It, it could be as easy as that. Yeah, it could. Um, yes, uh, because so the relying the relying party will in the challenge token it can have an audience field, and this if if present this audience field is should be the one claiming it, or or finish like putting the response. So the uh, the I ISS of the response token should match the audience claim of the challenge token, but this is only like a may. Um, or it can. I need to update some wording here, but it, it's a it's a may, in that like you don't need this um, if you don't if you haven't already as a relying party yet if you haven't established who your audience is who you're talking to um, you don't need this. But if you do already know that um, this is definitely more secure to put like an audience claim on this and then that way you know who you're dealing with um, when they respond. Thank you. I, I kind of have to digest that. Um, I'll let other people. So it can bootstrap a conventional authentication, or it could already be 
or it could just assume someone's already authenticated with a VP, like an empty VP, empty VP auth, for example. Yeah. Um, another interaction that I kind of was thinking of doing was just like an auth interaction, where instead of like empty VC or empty VP, uh, it's like an empty response token. Basically, you just like give it a challenge and send it back. Basically, the same thing as an empty VP, but you just using JWTs. Um, right. Skip the whole like data proof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's it's fairly unopinionated on in terms of like how auth works uh it should be up to the, like the relying party on okay. auth mostly but i think the the wacky uh prez x stuff uh changes that a little bit um so but that'll that'll be all reincorporated into wacky proper uh once that's done great great uh uh, other questions? I don't want to monopolize, but I'm not seeing hands or Q pluses. Um, I did have one question. I have been curious. I know it, it, uh, uh, I remember there was an IAW session where Keith is in the audience here um and daniel hardman talked about qr codes and i know it's come up again in a different context being deceptively standardized or that there's like common libraries that have some stuff built in what what sort of uh what's your experience been making a reference implementation on the qr part like what libraries do you use or yeah. does it matter yeah so um we use, uh, I'll just pull it up. Uh, I think it's qr.js. Yeah. It's this eight year old, not like <laughs> updated ever library. So yeah, that is. It sounds very secure. A very pain point <laughs> that, that I'm feeling. Um, but we have our own qr react library that, that leverages that and then renders like a nice looking uh, qr code. Oh. Um, and I'm working on right now, uh, like moving some of this into that library. Uh, so we can have like a fully updated one. Uh, like for example, this library only handles uh, like string encoded, like strings, eight, eight, eight bit encoding, or like bit byte encoding for the QR data. Uh, but then there's things like you should be able to support like string data alpha or alphanumeric numeric kanji and something else beta mm -hmm. i forget the other one uh but i'm working on implementing all of those in our uh in our library here and this library is pretty uh flexible in that you can change the color you can hide the logo you can uh change the the the, the dots uh to be squares and all that can you put adrian's face in the middle <laughs> You can put anything, any logo here. Ooh, okay. <laughs> take, um, take note, Adrian, take note. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do feel the pain point of like, no good QR libraries, really. <laughs> and, and that's an NPM? That's just like a Bloom, something you published NPM from Bloom? Yep, we have a few Bloom protocol is our uh, scope. So right. we'll have a lot. We have quite a few packages out there now. Cool, cool. Okay, and um, did you, so um, just to beat this dead horse, the the URL there is just the API, the post endpoint. Um, could it be very, very long? Could it have a query string? Is any of that kind of stuff yeah. specified? Or is it so just this... an adventure? This is a this is a get endpoint. This is the one that, that that initiates the flow. So you'll do a get call to this and get a challenge token back. Um, but yeah, so the only um, restraint on this is that it has to be a URI, and uh, that's the only restraint from the spec. Uh, the other constraint would be you can't have it so large that it breaks QR codes. Would be the only other one. But that's like a QR spec uh, constraint. Okay. So if you have like, and, and QR and link are really just two uh, initiators. Um, you could have initiators that just like send a 
payload pay, send this payload with like nfc or whatever uh it's really just all about getting this this payload from the relying party uh mm-hmm. into the mobile app, into the, the the holder to the wallet very interesting yeah i want i you make me wonder if the aries uh, if the didcom v2 nfc work would have opinions or constraints for this yeah interesting yeah i hope that gets folded in and at some point oh i see a hand uh keith i I mean it's i i think this is great your documentation is great it all makes sense i guess the overall question we ask is especially when you're doing like verified presentation responses do you think there's any threat that we overload the tokens like especially when you have implementations that put like PDFs or stuff, like larger data in. I, I mean, I, I know it's a little bit tangential, but do you, do you have any of those thoughts or concerns or you think this is fine? Like when the, like, uh, are you talking about? Um... The, the payload itself is quite large. And so we kind of overload the, the, mm. the token itself. The payload, yeah, in the, yes. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to find a good link. Um... Do response. Yeah. Uh, no, wait. Request. Yeah. So, like this response token that would contain, like, no, this one doesn't have this challenge, this response token that contains this verifiable presentation, for example. Um, yeah. Like having this, this is going to be pretty large in here. Um, and I, I actually don't know if, if, if that is like an issue because I, I have noticed that, like, in our testing that the response token for this uh, request share flow is like this, this is huge token. It's very, very long. Um, and I think that that's somewhat to do with the challenge token containing its own presentation definition. Um, but there's, there's some ideas on that instead of having uh, this presentation definition always be declared inline. It can be inline or it can be a URI to some other resource, um, to some static resource. Um, or I think that, see, that'll help with the size. I think we see some implementations that use like multiple JWT. Like when you start unwrapping, like there's a JWT inside a JWT, into JWT. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's also... Sorry, I think you cut out at the end. I was just saying that that's not. Oh, yeah, it's kind of painful to go through, but I mean, that's the other yeah. thing I've seen. That, that's basically what this is doing. Um, so this this response token here is a, is a JWT, and then it contains a JWT here in this challenge field. This is another JWT uh, that, that they got from the relying party. Um, so it does do that kind of chaining as well. Um, but yeah, it's still pretty large, uh, mostly because of like the VCs and the VPs uh, here. I have a question if, um, but I'm not sure if I'm next in the queue. Go ahead, go ahead, Pam. I uh, I already asked one question. I'll wait. Okay, sorry. I I just want to make sure I'm not walking over everyone. Um, I so I have a couple of questions, and I just want to say that I'm not asking these in any kind of. Um, you know, I'm I'm not asking in anger because I know this is new, right? And you guys are this is. I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that where Rome just can't be built in a day. So, so please, <laughs> please take it in that collaborative um, spirit. Um, one of the things that I, I don't see in here is um, so you know any normative text around verifying the response token or the, the challenge token. Like it, it's sort mm. of the stuff that's in the swim lane is is the only the, you know there's no you must make sure it's signed by the relying party. It's just in the swim lane. It says has to be valid and signed by the relying party. Um, is that kind of stuff just stuff that's that's on the list to get done? Yeah, like I, I, I wrote this um, outside of diff and then donated it to diff. Okay. Um, so a lot of that kind of stuff uh, wasn't done. Um, so yeah, that, that is like, that's definitely holes of like uh, a lot of the normative stuff for sure. Okay, yeah, because um, I, I mean, I, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that has to go in here like um, making sure that you have protection from unsolicited requests. You know, you need nonces to make sure that the, um, you know, that the pieces can be correlated. 
um, sure. between steps and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, I, I'm happy to help contribute some of that, or at least, you know, show, show where there are gaps and then smarter people can contribute it for sure. So, cool. so yeah. Great. If it's, I, yeah, I definitely agree that those, those, those are holes for sure. Yeah. Okay, great. And, and yeah, I mean, I guess that goes back to my question about like, are there constraints on who the issuer is? And is it, are you assuming that the Jose stuff takes care of that security or is it sort of have to happen in both places or, you know? Hmm. Um, what, what, can you expand on that a little bit? Oh, sorry, I, I just, yeah, I, I, would, I was just agreeing with Pam that I'm, oh, okay. I'm a little okay. confused on what's out of scope because it's assumed to happen in presentation exchange and what just hasn't been written yet. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, there definitely does need to be work on that. And I'm assuming a lot of that uh, will take from like the wacky uh, Prezac stuff and, and kind of be brought back over here. Nice. Okay. And uh, Ad Adrian, sorry, we interrupted you if we jumped to you. No, no, that's, uh, that's fine, actually. I, I was basically about to ask what I think is what Pam asked, but I, I was going to ask in a in a more specific way, uh, just judging by the terminology uh, you use, um, there's some kind of an assumption that there's either something like OAuth or uh, GNAP uh, that deals with uh, the uh, holes, as uh, as you put it, um, that. So I'm just curious, would the next step be to map what's going on here into OAuth 2 or into GNAP or both? Or is it a situation where for some reason you would invent uh, a th yet a third way of plugging the holes? Um, I don't know if, if OAuth and uh, would necessarily fill the gaps I was I was speaking about um, because um, because I think Wacky it doesn't really care who the issuer or or holder is it just like cares about like what the string is and what their did key or their their key ID is to verify the signature. Um, and anything else like that would probably be out of scope. Uh, but I also think that the, the wacky Prez X stuff is incorporating Didcom as the authentication layer, um, as like a step before this. Um, I think, I think we'll probably take a lot of learnings from the, the wacky Prez X, uh, work, uh, and reincorporate that, um, that that'll help with the authentication and like the full story and we'll have normative text um, and really spell out all the details um, there 